The machine behind me is a reclaim system for processing water back through the car wash. Today we're here to learn how to start it up and properly control it. To start us off, we're going to look at all the pipings that comes into the unit and goes out of the unit to make sure that everything's been sized properly for the installation. From our design, the first thing that you have on the unit is going to be a recirculation pipeline. The recirculation pipeline goes back to the tank and is circulating 35 gallons a minute of water along the oxygen and ozone to properly maintain the oxygen level in the tank. Inch and a half line always wants to be inch and a half line all the way to the tank. Don't want to go through any reductions. Reductions cause back pressure. Back pressure has caused problems in the uh, flow of the water back to the tank. One below it is going to be your freshwater bypass line. So your freshwater line coming into the unit, again, an inch and a half or two inch depending on the size of the system. One below that is going to be your reclaim output. That's again going to be an inch and a half or two inch depending on the size of the unit. This one in particular is an inch and a half, 70 gallon minute system. So we've sized the, sized the piping appropriately to the amount of water being flowing out of the unit. The bottom one is going to be your trench flush. Trench flush goes back into your trench to do two purposes brings water back into the trench for the purpose of moving solids down the trench. It also brings air and ozone back into the trench for odor and oxygen management and any stored volumes inside the tank. Again, inch net pipe wants to stay inch net pipe all the way out to the trench so we're not seeing reductions in flow or back pressure increases back into the system. Bottom pipe is going to be your return line back to the tank, which we call the underflow line. The underflow line is what carries your slurry of water and dirt back to the tank for storage and pump out later at the time needed. It is a drain line, so it's meant to go in a gravity style drain back into the tank, not uphill, not downhill, back to the tank in a gravity drain. The final one is gonna be your pipe coming in from the tank. It's gonna be either a two inch or a three inch, depending on the size of the system again. It's gonna feed the water from the tank right back into the strainer basket for us to pull back and reprocess. So the first part of starting up the system is to fill the basket up with water. The basket ends up being your first point of separation between the tank and the reclaim system. To start us out, all you do is remove the lid, fill the basket full of water. You can use the onboard fill function or you can use a hose or a bucket depending on which one's easier for you. In many cases, if it's the first time start up, a hose is gonna be your best bet because you're having to fill the pipe all the way back to the tank itself. Put the lid back on. Once it's full of water, put the bolts in. Get them all tightened back down again. Hand tight only, no tools. If we've got to use a tool, we've got something wrong. Just make sure we're always looking at it being a hand tight, hand tight function. Just tighten her down. You're ready to go. Next part of the start procedure is to verify the low level sensor. If there is one, great. If there is not one, we'll have to jump right out to make sure we're getting the right signal coming into it. From our perspective, we just need to make sure that there's a signal coming in. So what we're gonna do is go and, go and look at it. So we're gonna go to manual operation. Right now I can see that the low level sensor is not good, it's not on. So either we're missing the low level sensor or the tank is not full. What we're going to do here is we're going to simulate the input coming on so you can see what it looks like when it should be on. So in a normal operation, you're going to see that if there is a low level sensor or there's a jumper in the system, the light is going to be on telling you it's ready to start up the system. Without that light, it's going to fall right back out again on a low level. Progressing on in the start procedure, the first thing we can do is go back and clear any faults that occurred. So we're going to hit the fault button. As you can see, we had a low level fault. We're going to clear that fault which brings us back to the main screen. Now the system is ready to start up and ready to go. All we have to do at that point is hit the start button. Pump is gonna start. It's gonna come up the pressure and you're off and running. Part of the start procedure, we also wanna verify the operation of the ozone generators. The ozone generators deliver air and ozone back into the tanks for proper oxidization and ozone into the water for odor management. What you're seeing in this system, you're running about 13 and a half, 14 liters a minute. That 13 and a half, 14 liter a minute is being converted over to ozone. Ozone status is good. So we're delivering water, air and ozone out to the tank, as well as this one's running 11 liters a minute back to the trench. So we're in both cases, we're up and operational. To turn up the amount of it, we can control the volume of ozone 
by increasing it all the way to the top. They should always be all the way to the top when the unit is running. Final part of the start procedure is make sure you got water available to the car wash. Car wash water is delivered whenever the car wash controller tells the reclaim system to open the process valve. What we've done here is simulated the input coming from the car wash controller, and what you should see is that this valve will go from closed to open, delivering water to the last two cyclones for the car wash operation. So as the car wash would see the signal, reclaim receives the signal, valve goes to an open state, the yellow indicator indicates that the valve has opened and now we're ready to deliver water to the car wash. From that point on, you should be good to go and wash cars.